Normally, I'm a big believer that violence is not the answer, but when it comes to comparing two very high-end laptops, I think it should be a gladiator pit fight to the death, which is exactly why today we are doing a direct comparison between the latest Dell XPS 15-inch laptop versus Apple's 14-inch MacBook Pro. Both these were released this year in 2023, and they have some pretty hefty price tags that arguably cost more than a kidney, which is exactly the reason I think this comparison needs to happen and we're not gonna hold anything back it's not gonna be you know a cotton candy comparison we're gonna call it like it is there's only gonna be one winner by the time this comparison is done so put on your seat belts let's get started First impressions matter, which is why we're starting with design. The Dell XPS is the heavier of the two laptops here with an overall weight of about 4.2 pounds, so to be fair, it's one inch larger overall as well. The XPS has taken a very sleek and modern approach to its design. As you can see, it's got an asymmetrical, sharp, aggressive design philosophy over here. I love the stealthy silver and black color combinations. It's got a full metallic exterior top to bottom, and I love that carbon fiber inner chassis. Overall, this is a very sleek profile machine, though Dell has to make certain compromises, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Now, on the flip side, you have the MacBook Pro 14, which has a very industrial design and it's far more symmetrical but a little bit more chunky. Actually, it's considerably chunky compared to the XPS. Now, Apple has deliberately done this because there are certain practical benefits that come out of this, though the laptop does have a lighter weight of about 3.5 pounds and just like the XPS, it has a full metal exterior and inner chassis as well. In the design category, while both laptops look stunning, I think aesthetically speaking, the Dell XPS definitely has a more modern look. So I'm gonna give that point to the Dell XPS 15. Next up, let's talk about IO ports. The Dell XPS has a very primitive lineup in my opinion. You basically get three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports and a SD card reader, and of course the headphone jack, and that's it. For a laptop of this price, that's definitely a very limited selection. Now in contrast to this, the MacBook Pro not only offers you the same number of Thunderbolt 4 ports, counting at three, you also get a HDMI 2.1 port and the same SD card reader, plus you have a dedicated MagSafe 3 charging port so you don't have to waste any of the USB-C ports charging the laptop. Dell tries to make you feel better by including a dongle out of the box, but this is a very poor excuse. This should have been on the laptop from the get-go. Objectively speaking, the MacBook Pro just has more port diversity and that's a clear win for it. A huge shout out to today's sponsor, The Ridge Wallet. If you're really looking to make your old man's father's day awesome, replace his chunky wallet and get him this guy right here. Aside from having a super high quality two plate metal exterior, The Ridge Wallet can hold up to 12 full size cards securely thanks to that super durable and tangible elastic band. Additionally, it has RFID blocking technology and it comes in over 30 plus distinct colors and designs, so there's the perfect perfect design out there for everyone. But if you really want that child of the year award, get the Ridge key case with it too. It has the same high quality metallic exterior as the Ridge wallet, and it can hold up to six keys. Plus they even include two uncut keys for you in case you wanna customize those. It comes with a key ring and you can attach larger accessories to it. It's super useful if you don't want those keys hanging loose in your pocket. All of this and more can be found directly on their website. And since they have one of their biggest sales of the year going on right now, thanks to Father's Day, you'll definitely want to check these guys out. I will again leave a link in the video description below where you can find all the cool offerings they have right now. 
In terms of input devices, the Dell XPS 15 offers a massive glass surface trackpad with all the surf real estate in the world. You also have nice tactile and crisp clicks, a very limited amount of flex, and the trackpad is very well calibrated. The keyboard, not so good. So the actual keycaps have gone down in quality. They're slightly more wobbly and finicky this year compared to previous generations, and the typing experience has also taken a hit. There's less key travel. It feels like a more shallow typing experience. The keyboard is fully backlit and you do get a built-in fingerprint scanner, though it's worth noting you do not have a 10 keypad even on the 15-inch XPS. Now the real crime here is that 720p webcam. That's right, Dell includes a 720p webcam on their highest-end flagship laptop model. Inexcusable, it looks miserable. Now the MacBook Pro, similar to the XPS 15, also has a nice large trackpad, a premium glass surface finish. There is practically no flex here. The clicks are super tactile and crisp. And of course, it's super well calibrated. The keyboard is also really good. So it's the same one as the previous MacBook Pro. You have a decent amount of key travel. The keycaps are nice, large and spacious, well labeled, and they don't feel cheap or finicky in the slightest. Just like the XPS, the keyboard is fully backlit, you do get a touch ID or fingerprint sensor. And just like the XC15, you do not get any sort of 10 keypad here either. Rather, both laptops reserve that space for their comprehensive speaker systems. I have to say the actual webcam on the MacBook Pro 14 is so nice. It's a full HD webcam and the software integration here is top notch, quite literally, because whether you're using it in low light settings or bright settings, it does a great job at adjusting it and giving a clear image. This one is a clear win for the MacBook Pro 14. Display quality is a huge fundamental factor when looking at premium laptops. Now the XPS 15 is a little bit complicated since it actually offers two display configurations. The base configuration includes a full HD plus IPS panel display with a base 60 Hertz refresh rate, though you have an impressive 500 nits of peak brightness, and it's worth noting, you get 100% sRGB color coverage. Now, on the other hand, you can get the higher end OLED panel, which has a 3.5K resolution, and you have a impressive 100% DCI P3 color coverage, though you have a reduced peak brightness of just 400 nits. And also, it's worth noting, the display also comes with a standard 60 Hz refresh rate, which is a little disappointing. The MacBook Pro offers their liquid retina XDR, whatever display they call it, but it is essentially a mini LED panel with a 2.5K-ish resolution. You do get a nice 120 Hz refresh rate thanks to ProMotion technology. You also have a insane peak brightness of up to 16 100 nits. Although sustained brightness is at 500 and 1000 respectively for SDR and HDR content. And finally, just like the higher end display on the XPS 15, you have a 99% DCI P3 color coverage. This one could kind of go either way because I personally prefer OLED panels. However, the fact that you get 120 Hertz and a higher peak brightness compared to both the displays Dell offers gives Apple a slight advantage here. And this one goes to the MacBook Pro 14. Performance is such a large area that I've kind of divided into three subsections. So we have CPU performance first and foremost. The XPS 15 I reviewed was actually rocked the 13900H i9 processor and the MacBook Pro 14 I recently reviewed was rocking the M2 Pro 10 core chip. And while the i9 is more powerful in terms of benchmark, especially with a single core score, I did notice that the real world difference was practically non-existent between the two. So whether it was day-to-day -day activities like web browsing or watching HD content or doing more demanding activities like programming slash coding, 3D modeling or Photoshop editing, they just kept pretty much exactly the same. There was no clear advantage and they both had the base 16 gigabytes of memory, by the way. Even the most intensive activities like 4K video editing with multi-layer, 10-bit footage, as well as color grading was pretty much exactly the same experience that DaVinci Resolve with both of them. No one had any sort of lag. There was no you know, advantage to having one over the other. I really couldn't come to a genuine conclusion. As so, I decided to give both of them a point because again, there's no clear advantage of having one over the other in the CPU category. In terms of GPU performance, keep in mind the XPS 15 allows you to get the full suite of RTX 4000 series cards, so you can get the 4050, 4060, 
or the 4070 and they all come with dedicated VRAM. Now Dell really does a good job here because having that dedicated Nvidia card means you can take advantage of GPU acceleration when you're doing stuff like let's say video rendering on DaVinci Resolve which gives you pretty fast render times or it really helps where you're crunching those really intensive 3D models or even you're planning to do intense gaming, you can do it on your Dell XPS. Now Apple's M series chips are no slouch either. You can get up to 32 distinct GPUs GPU cores with the highest end M2 Max chip. However, the fact is that the 4000 cards just have a clear advantage. They have dedicated VRAM, they have far more graphical processing capabilities, they score higher on benchmarks, and if you were to do gaming, it's just going to be a far more superior experience with the Dell XPS. This one is a clear win for the XPS 15. The final aspect of performance is thermals. Now the Dell XPS under heavy sustained loads can hit an average surface temperature of right around 38 degrees Celsius. Additionally, it has a maximum fan noise of right around 50 decibels which is quite loud and the fans do go on fairly often. Now in contrast to this, the MacBook Pro hits a average surface temperature of around 36 degrees Celsius under heavy sustained loads and a fan noise of just 36 decibels which by the way you might never ever hear because those fans hardly ever go on. At this attribute, the MacBook Pro takes the win. In terms of upgradability, well, let me spell it out for you. The XPS 15 not only lets you upgrade the system memory, but also the SSD storage. The MacBook Pro lets you upgrade absolutely nothing. So basically, whatever you get on day zero is what you're stuck with. So of course, needless to say, this one clearly goes to the XPS 15. In terms of battery life, based on our real-world tests, we got around 9 hours on a single charge with the Dell XPS 15. This was with the i9 variation. Now, the MacBook Pro, the M2 Pro chip will get you right around 12 and a half hours on a single charge with the same light load test and about 11 and a half hours with the M2 Max chip. Objectively speaking, the MacBook Pro 14 has the advantage here and so the point goes to the MacBook Pro. Next, we come to speakers and this one really shatters my heart because it was this close. So the XPS 15 has a total of four speakers, basically two woofers and two tweeters, and it can get really loud. There's a lot of depth and you actually have a little bit of bass. It's a really good set of speakers. Unfortunately, the ones on the MacBook Pro are just slightly better. So you have a total of six speakers over there, dual woofers and then two tweeters. And it's a little bit louder and a little bit deeper than what the XPS 15 offers. And so the MacBook Pro 14 wins this one. Though I will say the speakers on the XPS 15 are still really darn good. Next up, we get to pricing. Now, the cheapest XPS 15 you can buy will cost you about 1500 US dollars. The cheapest MacBook Pro is going to be $2,000. Though, to be entirely fair, the cheapest XPS 15 does not have the discrete RTX graphic cards. If you want to get the RTX 4050, that price tag quickly jumps up to $1,900, bringing it much closer to the price point of the MacBook Pro. But if we are looking at it objectively, the XPS 15 has a cheaper entry point in terms of purchasing and so I think that one should go to the XPS 15. All right, it's time for the final results. So there were a grand total of 11 distinct categories we went through right now. And keep in mind, I told you guys there's only going to be one winner at the end. So here's the count. The Dell XPS won a total of five categories, while the MacBook Pro 14 won a total of seven categories. One of them was a draw, so they both got a point in that aspect. Now, this means the MacBook Pro is the winner of this competition. I know some of you are oogling to tell me how wrong I am, and I'd love to hear your thoughts as to which laptop you think is better, or if a point should have gone in a certain category to a certain laptop. I welcome all of that. Of course, keep in mind this is ultimately a subjective comparison. One laptop might be better for you versus the other, and I do think they're both pretty decent machines, though I just think the MacBook Pro has more to offer with the superior display, better web webcam, better keyboard, and more IO port diversity, though the discrete GPU offerings of the XPS 15 combined with sleep form factor might be a swaying decision for you. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. I will leave links to both these laptops below so you can check them out. See you in the next one.